Mercer speaking and um, I feel very honoured and privileged to be sharing a devotion with you this morning. Today I want to look at how should we as Christians celebrate the birth of Christ. I personally over the years have been through every school of thought regarding the celebration of Christmas and I'm of the opinion that Christmas has become quite unlike what God intended it to be. So I prefer to celebrate the birth of Christ rather than Christmas. Let us consider the shepherds today as our example of how the birth of Christ should be celebrated. We read the account of the shepherds in Luke chapter 2 from verse 8 and I will read that to you. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth to those uh, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. So the first thing that we see is that the shepherds believed what they had heard from the angels, and they went to see for themselves, and then they believed it enough to spread the word. Therefore, the best way to celebrate the birth of Christ is to believe and to surrender your life to Christ and accept his gift of salvation by the work he accomplished on the cross. This, after all, is the reason for his birth in the first place, to die on our behalf, to take our sin upon himself, and to rise again, defeating death and offering us eternal life in the presence of God. The next thing the shepherds do is to tell others about it. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. They willingly became witnesses of what they had seen. They were excited and could not contain their excitement. They were convinced of the truth of what they had seen, and they could not contain their conviction. They wanted everyone to know what they had witnessed and experienced. They did not worry about their sheep. They left left their flocks and they went to see the thing that had happened, and they only returned to their flocks after they had spread the news. Are we spreading the news? Are we excited? Are we convinced of the truth when we stand in church and sing those Christmas carols? Does it exude from our very inner being, our excitement about our Saviour, Jesus Christ? We then read that those who heard the news responded with amazement to their amazement, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. When we are able to share with holy and incomprehensible awe our experience of Christ, then others respond in kind. This is known as charisma, from which we get the word charismatic. So we celebrate the birth of Christ with charisma. We share our experience of being renewed in a relationship with God and encourage others to come and see. 
Are you encouraging others to come and see? Are you sharing that incredible experience of being renewed in your relationship with God? We next read what effect this had on Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. In her amazement, she thought deeply about what was happening and was trying to understand it all. No doubt, she was remembering her own visit from the angel who had told her she was to carry the very Son of God and now the reality was beginning to set in. We too should ponder the things of God. We are in the very fortunate position of having the Word of God in the form of the New Covenant established through Jesus to help us ponder with meaning. We're not like Mary who didn't have the Bible, who didn't have the New Testament, who didn't have the history of Jesus to see the purpose of God. She had to stand in faith and she truly pondered these things in her heart. The Word of God is available to anyone who lives in a free world. Do you have it? And it is desperately sought by those who do not live in a free world. Let us celebrate Christ by celebrating his word and pondering it and treasuring it in our hearts. When the shepherds returned, they were glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen, which were just as they had been told. When we glorify somebody, we acknowledge their true worth. So I challenge you, what is, the, what is God's true worth through the birth of Jesus Christ? Let's consider this. Through his birth, we learn the extent of God's love for us. God loved us so much that he became man in order to die for us. We also learn of his power. His becoming man is way beyond our ability to conceive or understand. We learn about his wisdom. He uses little things, insignificant people like you and me, unlikely situations to exalt the humble and to subdue the proud. We learn of his mercy and grace, his selfless sacrifice in becoming man and allowing his son to suffer and die for an undeserving recipient, you, me, and the rest of humankind. We learn of his faithfulness and trustworthiness. Through the birth of Christ, his promises of redemption are fulfilled. Do you realize that? Redemption. We came into a world that was lost. He came into the world that was lost, a world that was dreadfully confused. A world that was dying. Does that sound familiar today? Don't we often sit back and wonder what is happening to this world around us? It's no different to the world he came into. And the shepherd celebrated his birth by taking the news of his arrival to their contemporaries. They were witnesses of what they had seen and experienced. Let us also be Witnesses of what we see and what we experience in our relationship with Jesus Christ. This is the way to celebrate the birth of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we thank you and we glorify you and we exalt you for what you did for us by sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the final bridge of the gap between you and your creation. We thank you for the salvation to eternal life and to peace on earth that we receive through our relationship with you through Jesus. We pray that you will renew the fire of excitement in our souls and that you will provide us with opportunities to share our awe and amazement of what you have done through Jesus, wherever we find ourselves. Give us the discernment, the courage, and the power of words to be able to share Jesus and his work on earth and upon the cross with others, 
so that they too may experience the joy and peace of knowing Jesus as their Lord and Saviour as they surrender their lives to his Lordship. Teach us, Father, to celebrate the birth of your Son with honour and by bringing glory to your name. May the whole world resound in praise as they remember the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.